Hello, I'm Alan Martin, an Applications Manager in the Simple Switcher Group at Texas Instruments. Today we're going to talk about an automotive application for one of our new products, the LM43603. It's a 36 volt capable device with 3 amps of available output current and we're going to show you how to apply this into an automotive application where transient events could easily damage the device. In an automotive application, there are many dangerous events that can occur for an electronic device tied to the battery bus. In particular, during replacement of the vehicle battery, the installer may inadvertently reverse the terminals of the battery and that can uh, lead to a negative voltage being applied to the battery bus, damaging electronic devices. So any new device that you attach to the bus has to be capable of sustaining that kind of punishment. In addition, someone may short the battery bus while the product is running and the charged capacitors that are present in the electronic circuitry can then discharge out through the input into the battery bus and again damage may be sustained. In addition, our application will show you how to control inrush current into the large capacitors present in the circuitry and also an overvoltage disconnect. During normal vehicle operation while the battery is charging, if the battery charging path becomes interrupted either due to a dirty battery terminal or an open cell in a defective battery, a voltage surge known as load dump will occur on the battery bus and that can easily exceed the rating of many electronic devices. So we'll show you how to prevent that as well. Uh, let's talk about this circuit in um, block diagram form first. So this is a block diagram of the application circuit. On the right hand side is the LM43603 application board. And in front of it we're placing some added circuitry to protect it from transient events that can happen on the battery bus. So the battery bus is here on the left hand side and the first device in the application circuit is a polarity guard diode. Now this is a fast recovery silicon diode and it provides polarity protection of course but in addition it's got outrush protection so that the charged capacitor that sits over here at the input to the 43603 is prevented from discharging out the input in the event somebody shorts the bus. The key device in this application is a P-channel MOSFET transistor and there are several circuits that control the action of that MOSFET. The first block is an inrush current limiting section, that's two RC networks and we'll show you that in detail. There's an overvoltage disconnect which turns off the MOSFET and additionally there's a supervisor that enables the power supply once the MOSFET is fully on. So let's look at that application circuit in detail. So schematically, of course, we've got the battery bus on the left hand side, the polarity guard diode that we've discussed previously. Here toward the right is the series pass MOSFET and then the output is the switching mode power supply uh, that is uh, sitting downstream and not shown in this diagram. But we are showing bulk input capacitance that is generally there part of the EMI protection, uh, I'm sorry, the EMI conducted EMI uh, prevention circuit. If we look at the active circuitry controlling the gate of the MOSFET, right in the center of the screen is the soft start RC network. The initial condition when you first apply power is that this one microfarad capacitor is not charged. Therefore, the source to gate voltage is zero and the drain is not conducting. Shortly thereafter, the capacitor starts charging through this large resistor value, turning on the MOSFET. As the MOSFET reaches its threshold, there's an additional RC network which sustains the threshold period and reduces inrush current. There's an 18 volt gate clamp across the uh, gate to source in normal operation that is never conducting and there's also an overvoltage disconnect circuit on the very left hand side. The way this works is when you get above the breakdown voltage of the Zener diode you pull base current 
through this PNP transistor and that shorts the gate drive into the MOSFET disconnecting the load. Likewise there's another block which is a capacitor reset function so that when power is disconnected both these RC time constants are reset back to zero. Now there's also an additional circuit we would like to recommend and that is an enable supervisor which we'll discuss in the next slide. The upper block is a repeat of what you saw in the previous slide and then the lower block is an added disable circuit which uh, turns off the power supply if the MOSFET is not fully conducting. It consists of a p-channel FET that's normally on, a P and P transistor which is acting as a voltage comparator. If you've got voltage from source to drain this transistor will be turned on and that disables the downstream power supply. Well there you have the application circuit. Now let's go to the bench and see it in action. What we have here as a load switching mode power supply, we have the LM43603 demo board. Here's the IC and the surrounding passives. We have an interface board which allows us convenient access with uh, banana jacks and we've interfaced it to a prototype of the application circuit that we just described and it resides here on this milled copper board. For bench equipment, first we have a bench power supply emulating the battery bus of the vehicle. Next is a voltmeter monitoring that power supply voltage and the input to the protection network. And this voltmeter which monitors the output of the protection network and the input to the simple switcher evaluation board. And then finally this electronic load which presents a load to the output of the simple switcher. And then of course an oscilloscope to show key waveforms during the application of power to the circuit. So the first thing we'll do is we'll enable the power supply and we'll apply 12 volts to the application circuit. And here you can see the rise time of the power supply creating this VN trace uh, that is colored in orange. And then the output trace, the blue trace, is what is feeding the switching mode power supply circuit in this application. The pink stage is the enable line and you can see that once the power supply is enabled we start drawing current as shown on the green trace which is input current into the entire application. Next we'd like to demonstrate the overvoltage disconnect function and we'll do that by raising uh, the power supply voltage up to uh, past 20 volts and again that Threshold can be adjusted by changing the zener in the overvoltage disconnect. So now again looking at the screen, you can see the input voltage increasing in one volt increments as we go toward the right of the screen. And right at the beginning is when the disconnect occurred. So the blue trace is the output voltage from the protection network slowly discharging because we've disabled the switching mode power supply as you can see in this pink trace and right at the very beginning you can see that input current went down to zero. If we decrease the power supply voltage back toward 12 the system will again re-enable and we again get a soft start event. The output voltage slowly increased in a control manner as the MOSFET turned on the input voltage was decreasing during this event and again we have this enable which delays the turn on of the switching mode power supply. We can see that right here in the green trace as input current rises from zero. Well there you have it. Uh, we've shown you an application circuit that provides uh, many features including reverse polarity protection, uh, outrush current limiting in the event somebody shorts the battery bus, there's controlled inrush current, uh, an overvoltage disconnect that turns off the MOSFET protecting the uh, downstream power supply, and an enable supervisor that we recommend in some applications. One of the benefits of all the circuitry though, if you study the schematics, is that there's nearly zero added quiescent current from all that circuitry. Only one transistor, that's the MOSFET, is conducting in normal operation. All these devices are commonly available and available for multiple vendors and 
Uh, if you would like to know more about this application, go to simpleswitcher.com and look for the app note number noted at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your time.